I say I'm a guitar player very loosely. But I'm definitely a, a singer more than a guitar player. I make a living, that's my job. I'm a full-time singer, basically, singing covers. And I have no um, hang-ups with anything. I sing um, to backing tracks, no problem. I sing covers to backing tracks in pubs. I make a good living out of it. I just wanted to uh, just be myself, really, and put, put my own songs out there. I write songs about life living in a city, and I think people can relate to what I'm writing about. I think that's the main key. If the subject is something that everyone can get behind, then it's all right. They had to go on strike. The rest of us had to go to work on fucking push bike. There's potholes on every street. They need some tarmac. You can use the money that you make for our road tax. I try and write things about what I'm seeing as I'm walking around or driving around. And um, just, just about normal life. And I think that, that because of write like that, and I, and I tend to sing in my own accent, I don't have an Americanised accent, it's, it's very much a, a London accent. I think the people around here particularly, they think, oh, I can relate to that guy. The main thing was when, when Charlie got murdered. I don't know Charlie, I don't know his family, but it was on, literally on our doorstep. It was, and, and what's bizarre about, I find it bizarre, really. Not bizarre, but just sad. Um, he got knocked over. He, he ran a motor moped, got knocked off his bike by a, um, a gang of five in a four by four. They jumped out, attacked him, stabbed him, killed him. In the process, another 16 year old that jumped out of the car got stabbed and died. So two boys got stabbed. Two 16 year olds got, got murdered in our, in our town. And that just got me thinking about knife crime and what my first memory of it was Stephen Lawrence, because I was young when that happened. And, um, but I remember it, and that is only maybe five miles away. So I was like, fucking hell, like, that's, <laughs> that's there, and that was 30. And, and lit. so he, uh, Charlie got stabbed in November of 22. And I think, I can't, this is off the top of my head, but I think in May 23, Stephen Lawrence had been murdered 30 years previous. And I'm thinking in my head, like, in, in that 30 years, there's so many children that have been killed. And what have we learned from it? Nothing. It's still happening. It's probably more now than ever. Like, nothing has changed. And that's what the story is about. The politicians have changed London a lot. There's a lot that I don't agree with. And then you'll hear it in the songs that I sing tonight. <laughs> you just get taxed for driving your car. Just literally for getting in your car and driving it. <laughs> you know? And, and there's, there's things like that that have changed drastically from when from where you live in other areas particularly I think um, but yeah generally I don't I don't think London's changed I've grew up in I've grown up here all my life so I lived in, in East London in the 80s 90s and it was it's always been a bit rough it's always been a bit what it is you know
You've got a mayor, and, and I have no, um, with political parties, I've come to the conclusion they're all the same. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not um, digging out one or the other. The mayor at the moment, he doesn't drive. He has no idea what it's like for drivers in London, and he's putting all these new laws in where you have to pay a fee to, to drive your car if it's over a certain age. So the mayor is completely different to the Prime Minister in terms of their parties. He's telling you, you can't drive this car because it's pollution and, and whatever. And then you've got another, you've got the Prime Minister that flies a jet to get from Manchester to Newcastle and then back to London. And it's like, and I've got to sell my van because it makes too much pollution. You know, now I can't afford to replace the van that I've had to sell. And there's nothing wrong with it. Perfectly good car or oh, van. I can't can't use it anymore. It's the poor people or the, or the working class people that are always being screwed. A lot of people that are from London can't afford to live in London. It's it's so expensive, and it's not even the property that's expensive. It's just physically living in London. The council tax is ridiculous. The the charge to drive your cars. I keep going back to cars because I think it's a massive thing. How can my I take my son? He's he's, quali he's just qualified as an electrician. He's 21. Um, now, if he wanted to take a ladder around with him, he's going to have to have a van. For him to buy a van, he's going to get in debt because he ain't got 16, 17 grand to buy a, a van that's ULES compliant, right? So he's going to have to buy a van. So straight away, he's qualified, he's in debt. Everyone needs, the same, everyone needs the same um, opportunities, you know, and... and if you're if you've got loads of money great right well done that's good no problem but don't stop someone that isn't as fortunate getting up the ladder don't stop them don't put hurdles in the way for them to earn money they should allow people to make something of themselves yeah no what that is. yeah and if it means again i'll go back to the car if it means them buying a fucking 300 pound car and driving it around to build up their business then let them do that don't charge them because they can't afford Underground Tesla. <laughs> Those were the best days of our lives. Put our appetite and we never realized. Those were the best days of our lives. Because at the time we never realized. You've got people that are, you've got people that are, go to work and they can't afford their bills. And you get a politician that can claim 66 grand a year expenses. It's fucked up. <laughs> no matter how you look at it, that's fucked up. 100%. He's earning that amount of money and he can still claim 66 grand's worth of expenses. And you've got some poor sod that can't afford his bills. He'll go and do something a little bit dodgy and he'll get banged up or he'll get fined. And then you've got these crooks that are just... Just this morning. Composing voices, 18 awaiting. Hey, boy, they shout. Who you got any money? That's it. A little money, and you take away curry, and I'm on the way home to my wife. She's been laying out a calorie, and now she's expecting me. Polishing it, pulling out a coat. I'm down in a Tuesday show every night. Oh, oh, oh. I actually had my wedding in here, underneath here, underneath this tent. Um, there's a great stage, but it's cold, so we're not there. We're in the little room now. Um, I live at the end of the alley. We've got Meg Johnson. She's opening it up. She's playing right at the moment, and she is a barmaid here, but she's got a fantastic voice, and she's done the open mic, and I said, look, you need to be doing more stuff, so get involved with us. Um, then I'm going to go on, and then we've got the theme that are going to go on. They're like local big local band around here so um, and there's so many pubs that are closing now and being turned into flats it's good to keep something going this is the only pub 
in this area now. It's a prime piece of land, you know. You've got um, BT have just sold all this land next door. No doubt going to be flats, and they want to get hold of the pub, but they're not letting them. So. One of my favourite lines, one of my favourite lines from anything, is uh, a punk poet who said, Hitler couldn't flatten London, but the town planners are. And that was written 79 or 82, so around that sort of time. Yeah. Still just as relevant. I think I'm going to keep that in my mind, actually. <laughs> Yeah.